We've drawn a top view and the front view of a transition piece with a round base and a square top part. The round base being 60 millimeters in diameter and the top part having a square base with 25 millimeter sides. Step one, I divide my circle into 12 and you guys should know by now how to do that. The next step then is to label these markings, all 12 markings, and label the square. In step two, you can see that I've now joined each one of the square corners, corner C, D, E, and F. I've joined that with the 12 markings on my circle. From point C, I've drawn four lines, one to point 12 or point B, one to point one, another line to two, and another line to three. From this corner, I've done the same. I go back to my point three, and I draw my triangulation lines right around the circle, as you can see. So the division of the circle gets joined with the corners of the square. I've only labeled A and B because A is going to have the same length here, 12C or BC. It's going to have the same length as C3. It's going to have the same length here, same length there, as you can see. B is going to have the same length as this 1C, this B line. It's going to have the same length as C2. It's going to have the same length as D4, D5, 7E, 8E, 10F and 11F. They will all have the same size as B. So I'm only going to work out the true length of that line A and this line B. But there's another line that we need to find true lengths of, and that is each one of these 12 segments. So the next step then will be the following, and that is to determine the circumference of the circle. You know what the circle diameter is? It is 60 in diameter, so we work the circumference out, and uh, you get your total and divide your total into equal parts. If you do it by via calculate and you want to show your calculations, then you have to show it in this manner as I've done. But it's better to do it this way. Let me explain why. Once you've done that and you've worked accurately with sharp instruments, you can put your compass on that point and open it to that point with fair accuracy. Otherwise, one could easily say, okay, the circumference is 15,7, um, which might not be so accurate. Because remember, if you lose, just let's take this distance here as 16 and not as 15,7, there's a comma three millimeter discrepancy. So another comma three plus another comma three is comma nine mil millimeters difference plus another comma nine difference plus another comma nine difference plus another comma nine difference. That's going to give you three comma, uh, if, if I've got it right, three comma six millimeters discrepancy to which, which is, will be too long and that is incorrect. So we make use of this method. You put your compass on that point, open it to that point, but please, please, please work accurate and that will give you a very good um, size for your compass when we start with the development in a later stage in this lesson. We now work out the rest of the true lengths, which was, as I've said before, this A length and that B length, 12C and 1C. I've only done those two, as I've explained. These others have the same length, 2C, same length here, and 3C, same length there, and the same goes for the others, uh, segments or folds around the circle. So I'm going to work out that length. I'm going to work out that length. We have determined this distance then as 15,7 via construction, dividing the circumference into 12. All right, so ladies, let's determine the true length of this A line, C12, or one could even say CB. The length would then be, by putting your compass on B, opening it to point C, because we can add point C here as well as point F, C being in front, F at the back. So I'm opening my compass at point B, opening it to point C, and I drop myself a construction line, as can be seen with that red line here, and that red line going down. C has moved to the right-hand side, C moves to the right-hand side. That's my true length. Please take note that the distance we are talking about, 12C, is not, or BC even for that matter, is not this true length. 
because BC or 12C here is not parallel to the XY line. Therefore, it is not a true length the same as BA is the case. BA is a true length in this view because BA is parallel to my XY line. Because this is parallel to my XY line, BA is a true length, so we can label BA or AB as 67.31. Now, as I've said, we now need to construct the true length of 12C or BC from or using this method. And the length thereof, when, uh, once we have measured it, we find that that distance there, BC equals, I've just said that A distance is 68,47. I've then also determined the true length of 1C. Right, we could have done it in a different manner, I'll show you in a moment, but I've projected point 0.1 to the top. I've projected to my front view in this case. I've then drawn a line from point 0.1 to point C because the line 1C is joined. And I have put my compass on point 0.1 open it to point A and I've drawn that circle, the green line. Point A has, of point C rather, point C has moved to the right and therefore point C moves to the right and I join that point with point one, which is going to give me a more accurate method. The longer line you can use with your compass, the more accurate line you're going to get here. Let me explain why. If you construct using your compass on point 1C here, I'm going to zoom into this so that you can see what happens. From point 1 to point C, you drop a line. And now remember, I've zoomed in a couple of times. Look how close this line then becomes to this point C. And if you project upwards towards point C, it would look as if it's going to end right there where point C, point A, C, or F, because the point C is in front, A in the middle, and F at the back. It looks like it ends right there in the corner, but it doesn't. Let me zoom in and show you. Can you see? There's a slight difference. So what happens now is you use that, and you are now wanting to draw the true length of C1. You need to project 1 to that specific point Anyhow, now you are going to uh, now you're going to draw a line that goes from this point to find the true length to that point, and you will say that wow, it is so close that that point view of a millimeter is not going to matter. But I'm not just referring to this drawing. In other drawings, it can make quite a difference. So that's why I prefer rather to use the longer line and then do the construction from the long, the view with the longer line down as I've explained in the previous step and then joining one with that point. It just gives me uh, more confidence that my line is more accurate. I've now then gone ahead and I've labeled all the true links. AC, I've got that in my head already as 12 and a half, so I haven't labeled that. I know that a, B is that length measured from top to bottom. I've labeled that as 67,31. And I've labeled this distance here, this A distance from point B to point C, true length that I've worked out there, that red line, that is B, C, or then just A equals 68,47. You can label that as 68,5, which is fine. And then this line B, that I've drawn here, which is line 1C. I've just named it line B, which is that green line, and that gave me a length of 66,43 or 66.43. And that is the true length that we're going to work with to do our development. So what I've done now was to measure AC, which is 12 and a half. We know that that's half of 25. And I've made myself a mark. I've measured BC because we need B to C and that colored triangle. And we know that the length of BC or then A is 68,47 or 68.5. Made myself a mark and I've joined C with A and C with B to get this red triangle. Now let's build triangle BC1. We've already got BC or line A, which is this one. 
So all that we need to draw now is that length, the true length of C1, which we've got as 66,4, and that segment. Now you will remember the segment, we've done the construction and we've determined that it's 15,7. So I've measured B1 and I've measured C1 to get that size. B1, 15,7, that distance, and C1, which was 66,43, 66,43 to get that marking. I've joined them with one another to get point 0.1 and there's my next triangle. The next triangle is built on top of C1B, is built on top of C1B, top of that one. So this is the common line, C1. So there's C1, I've got that. I now measure from point 0.1 to point 0.2, which is 15,7, which is that distance there. And I measure the true length of C2, and C2 has the same length as C1, which is 66,43, put my compass there, 66,43, and I've got my intersecting point. And I've built the next triangle, 1C2, 1C2. But now take note that what I've done here, I've wiped out that line and I haven't drawn a line in here because remember, the base is a circular shape. So our base here is going to be a curved shape. It's not going to be straight lines. Remember, in the previous drawing, we had a circle in the middle and we had to draw curved line here. Now the curve is on the base, so the curve needs to be drawn here. So from here on forth, I'm not going to join these lines with one another. I'm just going to draw the actual folding lines. The next triangle that needs to be drawn here is that blue one. The yellow one was this previous one. Now we're sharing this line C2. We're sharing line C2. We now need to get C3. So once again, 15,7 to get that point. And C3, same line, length as that one, which was BC, which was 68,47. We've done that, done the construction, drawn the line. I now want to build the brown triangle or golden color. You must remember that we do not need this triangle. It's a flat side going to one point. So we in actual fact need to work out that triangle. That can perhaps sound confusing, but remember that it goes flat all the way up to that point from this one. So we do not need that smaller triangle. We go and do this one, which is C, D, 3. I need to get point D. We know that from point C to point D is 25. That's the sizes that was given to us in the drawing. So I'm going to measure 25, make myself an arc, measure the distance of CD, which is the same as C3. It's the same as that length. So I'm going to measure that same length, make myself an arc. Note we've got three straight sides. It's a straight side to a point, straight side to a point, straight side to a point. So all three will be straight sides, no curves. We're going to keep on building triangle upon triangle upon triangle. I'm going to draw this triangle next to this one now because we've got D3, we've got point D, we've got three. So I need to now draw the circle, semicircle here, which is 15,7. And we need to find the distance of D4. And D4 is the same as C1, which was 66,43. So there is my line 4D. I now need to get line D5 or 5D. Once again, 15,7. And uh, line 5D will have the same length as D4, same length as that one. So I'll just make my mark, same length as my compass, and draw the line. Right, you can see that I have measured that distance, 15,7. Uh, I've measured that E6 the same length as D6, because they are the same length, and I've drawn this triangle, which was DE6, DE6. Then follows the next triangle, 67E, 67E. Then it's going to follow the next triangle, 78E, 78E, so I have to join 8. 
uh, determine 8. And I go about it the same way as I would with the rest. I measure 15,7. Uh, 15, I measure the length of E8. And E8 is going to have the same length as E7. We know that by now. And we get our point and we draw that line. And so we carry on building one triangle upon the other. Line E8 in place. Line E9 in place. 15,7 and E9. E9 having the same length as E6, as D6, as D3, as C3, as BC, which is 68,47. Next one is going to be the bigger triangle, which is this orange colored one. We have to get E, 9, F. So we've got E, 9. We need to get F. E, F is 25, so I measure 25. And that gives me triangle E, 9, F. Now what remains to be done is to get this point at the beginning of the base and start drawing the that point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Get that all joined with one another to form the base. But we need to stop here on BA because that was the seam, and we need therefore to get BA. B was there on the same point as point 12. So we need to stop with this triangle. So this triangle, this one, is this triangle I'm referring to. We need to stop with that one. So we need to draw the true length of FA and we need to draw the true length of AB of AB which is there at 12 so we need to draw that true length and then we can say we've completed this uh, drawing totally. That will give you the total drawing. We've got a straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line here yeah, and the base is drawn freehand with a curve. All answers here, yeah. all answers given, even this is now given the true lengths that's been shown, except that it's obscured by colors that I've left.